yesterday I am with the famous Thomas Cook, and he is also the ambassador of Estonia. Thank you, Mr. Cook, for your time um, for a meeting ambassador show. Tell us about yourself a um, little bit, um, how you started, how was Estonia, and how was the new Estonia, and uh, what people should know about Estonia. Well, as I said, my name is Thomas Cook. I'm a um, relatively new ambassador of Estonia here in Austria. I started my work here uh, one year ago. And uh, this is um, not my first ambassadorial post in diplomacy. I have worked uh, now for um, over 20 years, uh, representing Estonia in different places and in different organizations. And um, Speaking about uh, Estonia, as you know, we are a very small country, but uh, also with the help of the diplomacy, we are uh, hoping to make our country bigger than it actually is. What should people know about Estonia? I know Skype was born there, but most people don't. What are the things, three things you would like everybody to know about Estonia? I think uh, the biggest uh, successes of Estonia are indeed related to the IT industry and, and uh, software industry. In addition to Skype, uh, there are also a few other companies uh, which were born in Estonia, namely, for instance, uh, TransferWise, which helps uh, people to transfer uh, different uh, currencies from one country to another and uh, another very useful uh, company which uh, has built up uh, in Estonia is uh, a company called Bolt in the former name uh, Taxify. It's uh, it's very uh, convenient uh, taxi service which is available in Tallinn, in Vienna and in many other places in the world. So these are just two examples. Um, Estonia has uh, offered an e-residence program which allows people to become an e-residence. A lot of people think that they become like a citizen of Estonia. Uh, would you like to clarify that? No, this doesn't mean uh, citizenship. It doesn't uh, mean uh, the uh, living permits in Estonia, but uh, this helps people to use Estonian e-services uh, online. So that uh, once a uh, person has become e-resident, he can uh, establish a uh, company in Estonia and as Estonia is an uh, EU member country, this means that one can start doing uh, business uh, in the whole European Union thereby. And uh, this e-residency gives uh, people the opportunity to uh, operate uh, their company uh, digitally, including uh, giving digital uh, signatures doing uh, bookkeeping and, and all other uh, necessary things related to the operating of the company. And I was told that Estonia does not have any corporate tax, is that true? Uh, yes and no, in this sense that uh, we do have uh, corporate tax, but as long as uh, the corporate uh, profit is reinvested in the company, then it's tax-free. Only when uh, the dividends or some other way the profit will be taken out from the company, then this uh, profit will be taxed. Okay, that's a fantastic um, way to keep the capital grow and the companies grow. When I went to Estonia, I was fascinated that it's even more advanced than Singapore in terms of digitalization. Uh, and Singapore is one of the most digital countries I've been to before that. What makes that happen? Why is the mindset of Estonian so digital compared to Latvia or um, other parts of the world, uh, which is even next door, but it's still not that digital? Why, why do you think, what's the core of Estonian? Why did it become so digital? Well, let me start by saying that, of course, uh, Singapore and a uh, number of other countries are uh, very well advanced in uh, digital sphere and uh, we cooperate very closely with Singapore and a number of other countries because certainly there is no monopoly of uh, knowledge or technology in any of the countries yes. and we can um, secure the fastest development and progress only by uh, sharing our experiences and learning from each other. Having said this, um, and speaking about Estonia's um, um, experience, so to say, 
is that, uh, as you know, we regained our independence in the beginning of 90s and um, uh, we found that uh, we are a pretty small country, a uh, little number of people, no basically natural resources, but we still have to run our uh, state. So it meant that we need to do it as efficiently as possible. And this was one of the driving uh, motivations behind how people and, and government started to use uh, digital services. And I think there was, um, um, I always say that uh, you cannot start with uh, digital society just overnight, that uh, next morning you wake up and everything functions. Certainly in the Estonian case, it has been uh, the continuous learning curve over um, 20 or more years already. Starting with uh, online banking, then we started to declare our uh, taxes, uh, then we started to have our health data in the internet. Uh, in 2004, we started uh, internet voting, uh, which we have done now uh, for uh, 10 times already. But what is uh, very important is that uh, this uh, learning curve has been a really positive experience. So that uh, mm, from one experience, from one positive experience, we went to another positive experience. And um, this was really motivating for the people to uh, start using next uh, e-services. But uh, it was also encouraging uh, both for the government and also to the Estonian businesses to develop uh, those e-services more and more. What, as an ambassador, and you've you know, been to many countries, what are the three things you wish that uh, the countries around the world will pick up from Estonia and implement in their own countries? Well, one thing what we are promoting really around the world is exactly this e-governance and uh, digital services, because we really think that uh, like in the Estonian case, uh, they were very beneficial and uh, it helped us uh, save uh, our resources and GDP for other purposes. The same would apply for absolutely all other countries. Um, using the digital services also helped us to uh, cut the corruption because uh, it helps to promote transparency. So it's again horizontal issue what could be valid to all other countries around the world. And uh, of course also one thing what uh, we are increasingly more uh, using in uh, education is online learning. And again, uh, uh, educational sphere is something what uh, other countries could uh, use more using online services because then uh, really the distance uh, and geographical conditions doesn't matter if uh, people have the internet and they can do their school lessons uh, from home if necessary. And the third one, uh, the third one uh, I think which is uh, increasingly acute issue all around the world is uh, the climate change and the environment. And when you're visiting Estonia, then uh, going out of Tallinn you see there are a lot of uh, uh, forest, clean water, pure nature. So I would wish that uh, in the whole world we could uh, preserve more nature and we could have more uh, clean nature. To share for that. Yeah. Um, I come from Pakistan. It's a big country, 220 million people. Uh, we have 100% penetration of mobile phone already. We have 100% broadband penetration on mobile phone already. But we have not uh, been able to educate our masses. Uh, 60 to 70 percent of the country people cannot even read their name in any language. Um, any suggestions or what do you see in cooperation with our country so we can use digitization for a poor country like Pakistan can take advantage of the digital economy which you offer, so like especially like government services. Any suggestions for the, for the country of Pakistan? It's very difficult uh, for me to say or to give some easy uh, solutions, but uh, again, uh, as you said, that, that uh, the country is covered 100% by uh, mobile uh, network already, and uh, certainly there is a very big number of different telephones and, and iPads, computers in use of the people. 
So again, to, uh, to promote and advance education in Pakistan, which is certainly the foundation of uh, everything else for the people, I would think that um, if people could develop some kind of uh, mobile applications or computer programs where really small kids could start uh, reading and uh, also writing um, by those um, uh, apps and then computer programs, I think it will be very helpful for them. Um, anything, any last words? Welcome to Estonia. If somebody wants to start a business in Estonia, once he has an e-residence card, um, can they move to Estonia for working? For what's the, do you know the procedure of migrating or to live there or the visa? Yes, uh, everything has to be uh, done according to the regulations, but uh, the short answer is I would suggest really uh, to look at uh, different websites, all the information is available there, so, and if necessary, then always uh, one can uh, contact uh, any Estonian embassy in the world and ask for uh, further Brilliant. information if necessary. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Ambassador. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.